Hello, my friends, and welcome back to L.A. Noir. In our last video, we did continue to work on our case, a walk in Elysian Fields. Oh, my goodness. Everybody is throwing so much shade at Cole over his wife. But anyway, case, a walk in Elysian Fields, and we arrived at Chapman's apartment where we need to look for slash arrest him, I'm assuming. And you wait five years from now, all our jobs will be done by robots. Not really in five years. It's going to be a bit longer. Did he, he? He said something to us when we arrived. Nope, now we've got our clue music. Here, maybe? Let's see what he's hauling around. Oh, look, the ignition starter, right? It's about time for this movie. Motive, opportunity, and hard evidence. Yep. The heck? And ammo, it looks like? should revise the APB. He's clearly armed. Yeah. Huh. Definitely gives him opportunity. Okay. Uh-oh. Holy cool. There he is. It's Chapman. He's coming out of the laundromat. Shit. He's seen us. Cops! Again! Oh no! Son of a bitch, he must have caught the trolley. We gotta yeah. move fast, Cole. Uh. Sorry. I'll call this in, get some cars dispatched. Call the trolley? Car 11K calling KGPL. Oh, that's that. 11K requesting assistance. In pursuit of suspect aboard the 1110 University streetcar, currently heading east on Melrose Avenue. Advise all units. Suspect is in control of car and driving dangerously. Roger, officers Oh gosh, <laughs> that's not working either. Suspect aboard the 1110 University streetcar headed eastbound. Approach with caution, suspect is in control of the streetcar and driving dangerously. Get us to handle code three, identify. Stay on his ass, Cole. Don't lose him. I'm. I am. I'm, I'm not sure how I can stop a big, huge honking trolley, though. That would have been good. Look, Cole. The side plate's gone. Get me closer. I think I got a shot oh, here. Oh. What the hell? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. We gotta catch a bad guy. Side plate's gone. Okay. Get him close. Hold him tight, Cole. As soon as he ditches the tram, we'll be there to grab him. We're catching up. Slowly but surely. Get me closer to the driver's cabin. I'll plug Chapman. Ooh. Crap. End of the line, you little prick. Come on, Cole. I, I forgot he had a gun. <laughs> Looks like we have our man, Cole. Well done. I'm not so sure. Chapman seemed to have his own agenda. There seems to be more to this than a personal vendetta. Yeah. What are you talking about? The fires benefit a lesion in some way. Mm-hmm. see Chapman and Monroe working together. You have a point. The evidence is good for Chapman. Hard to be worrying about his side of the story when he's blasting away with that big 45. There's another conspiracy afoot. Nice work, gentlemen. Put yourself at considerable risk stopping that trolley and probably saved a lot of lives. Anyone else but you, Phelps, and you'd be up for a bravery award. We've had our eyes on that slippery son of a bitch Chapman for as long as I can remember. I couldn't be happier than to wipe him off the scoreboard. I hope this puts to bed that crazy stuff you had going about Leland Monroe. What were you thinking, Phelps? Be calling Richard Nixon a crook next. <laughs> <laughs> no, he'll tell us he's not a crook, right? <laughs> what is it? A letter from Lou. His insurance policy named me beneficiary. 
California Fire and Life. He worked for Elysian? The roof that he was working on collapsed. It's a very generous settlement. Elsa, I'd like you to do something for me. I think there's something dirty about Elysian Fields. What has that got to do with Lou? I want you to reject this settlement. I want you to go and see an investigator named Jack Kelso and ask him to make some inquiries about Lou's case. Isn't this police work? Do you want to find out what happened to Lou? Why would he help this Kelso? Jack won't be able to help himself if he smells a rat. He is a friend of yours? <laughs> hates my guts. Elsa, you could take this money and let them get away with it, or we could get Jack's help and do something about it. Why not be honest with this man, Cole? He deserves your honesty if you want his help. Believe me, Elsa, I'd like to level with him. I really would, but it's too late. Years too late. There, nope, no more. All clues, all questions, look at that. Case closed, distinguished. Chapman takes his motive and any possible ties to the Monroe and Elysian Fields to the grave. See, for the longest time, I thought Jack Kelso was another cop. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, uh, very, very wrong misconception. But anyway, let's move on. House of Sticks. Mr. Kelso? That's what the sign on the door says, miss. Are we playing as Jack now? What? Elsa Lichtman, 6005 West Sunset Boulevard, Hollywood, Los Angeles, September 23rd, 1947. Dear Miss Lichtman, pertaining to the matter of policy number 1190-1659 and the sudden death of Mr. Louis Jan Buckwalter, I am writing to inform you that you've been named as sole beneficiary of Mr. Buckwalter's estate. Please find attached a settlement check for 20 grand. Wow. 20 grand in 1947. I feel like that's insanely high. Anyway, the maximum payout amount in accordance with Clause 4A of the Life Care Disability and Accidental Death Policy, which Mr. Bookwalder held. If you wish to dispute the settlement, you may contact our account manager office by return mail or by phone during office hours. With condolences, Clarence W. Fleming, Claim Successor California Fire and Life Insurance. And that's where Jack works, right? There's no need to come into the office, Ms. Lichtman. If you accept the settlement, all you need to do is sign here. Oh, back, I, I don't accept the what settlement. What do you mean you don't accept? I think you're pushing your luck, lady. This seems to be a ridiculously generous settlement. A $200 policy with a $20,000 payout? Yeah. You should... I don't want the money. What do you mean you don't want the money? I want you to investigate this case. I feel my friend may have been the victim of foul play. Okay, let me get the case file. So question, wouldn't Jack know that, because I thought that Cole and Elsa's relationship was in all the papers about fallen police officer idol and etc. So Jack would know that Elsa's Cole's girl wouldn't he have an attitude, but I don't know, maybe he doesn't, but any, anyway. Okay, Elysian Fields Development, Normandy Avenue Subdivision. Latitude, long, longitude, that's strangely specific. Okay, let's look at their, their floor plans. Okay, so you go in the French door, you've got a, a nice porch, a parlor, and then a dining room and kitchen. So this would be your living room. It looks like they have a very large walk-in pantry a stoop in the back and then stairs up and you have a hall closet a bedroom without a closet that's that's not a thing anymore i feel like you have to have a closet for it to be a bedroom now uh one bathroom Oof. 
<laughs> and no, no, no bathroom on the on the lower floor either. But it's pretty, pretty. I I take it. I'll take it, please. So regarding insurance policy 1190 uh, 1659, while the employee of Elysian Fields Development, Louis Jan Buckwalter, was killed when the roof of the property on which he was working collapsed on Tuesday. Oh, I can't read the rest of it. California Fire and Life. Policy what number Normandy really? Avenue subdivision. Elysian Fields Developments was a property holder. What a Dependent fight. valuation February 23rd, 1947 for $3,500. So the payout is more than the house was worth. Previous property holder was City of LA. Insurance against loss or damage not exceeding $900. Ah, yes, lovely. So on Tuesday, 28th well, January, at approximately 8.30 in the morning, Mr. Buckwalter was ascending the roof structure of a property at the Normandy Avenue development when a fault in the ridge beam caused it to sag. Probably because you're using subpar, um, what is it, supplies, like they found when they were messing around with the... They were messing around with the last case, with the bricks and stuff. There we go. That's where I'm trying to go. Anyway... Development of fault in the ridge beam caused it to sag. Witnesses report that Mr. Buckwalter slipped and attempted to right himself by holding onto a ceiling rafter, but the rafter broke. Mr. Buckwalter fell approximately 20, ooh, 23 feet to the ground. His falling weight caused several ceiling joists to snap, and these fell inward along with part of a prefabricated roof truss. I feel like the wood should not be breaking this easily. An autopsy later revealed that Mr. Buckwalter's cranium oh, was shattered. Probably when he struck his head on the roof beams, he sustained significant internal injuries as a result of, fall, of the falling timber and died of internal hemorrhage approximately 10 minutes after the initial roof collapse. Independent testing of the ridge beam and roof truss has determined that faults in the timber were undetectable prior to installation. Witnesses report that Mr. Buckwalder was following all safety procedures. It is the opinion of this investigator that the death of Louis Jan Buckwald Buckwalder con constitutes a genuine and unavoidable industrial accident and no fault can be ascribed to Elysian Fields developments. The insurance- Sounds like your friend took a hell of a fall. I'm sorry for your loss. The insurance benefits associated with this policy should be paid in full to the designated beneficiaries. Timothy Lee, senior claims investigator, March 1st, 1947. Okay, and I think that was everything. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Of course not. Okay, he's got his own little notebook too. <laughs> Jazz singer, beneficiary of Louis Buckwalter's insurance policy. Let's let's observe her. Okay, disputed claim payout. What basis do you have for your claim of foul play? Louis Buckwalter was a craftsman. I don't believe he would have made a roof that would collapse. Hmm. But we know that that's not the reason, because we know that Cole sent her here. So, based on what I know, I'm going to go with doubt then, I think. I hope. You want me to reopen this case based on your woman's intuition? That isn't going to happen. Take the money. I've already told you I do not want the money. There's something wrong. <laughs> it's haunted. <laughs> That's what it kind of sounds like, right? Connection to Buckwalter. You and Buckwalter weren't married? No. Then how did you become his beneficiary? We were family friends. Hmm. I don't know if she's telling the truth or Okay, she's definitely not telling the truth. And I'm, I don't think I have anything to prove that she's lying. So we'll go with doubt, obviously, because it's the only one left. <laughs> you expect me to reopen this case because you come in here walking that walk? Well, I'm not buying it. I think you should tell me what the hell is going on. You really want to know? Yes. We were interned together on Ellis Island. Resident alien Germans whose parents had been killed by Nazis. Do you see the irony in that, Mr. Kelso? We spent four years there. Ouch, that's horrible. Motive for dispute? So the roof collapsed, accidents happened. What exactly are you trying to achieve here, Miss Lichtman? Exactly what I said. I want that building thoroughly investigated. But again, don't we know that she's lying? 
Okay. Well, then I have to go with truth because I don't have an actual proof that she's lying about anything. I'm intrigued, Miss Lichtman. I really am. But you're going to have to give me something if you want me to get involved in this. There is a conspiracy surrounding Elysian Fields and the new houses they are building. I believe your insurance company is involved. That's pretty heady stuff, Miss Lichtman. <laughs> yeah. Flimsy, but heady. I've told you what I know, Mr. Kelso. What are you going to do about it? All right, Miss Lichtman. One final question. Yes. What's your address? Is that the usual? Is there anything usual about this case, Miss Lichtman? The address is on the letter, Mr. Kelso. Yeah. The address. Not the phone number. Oh. Mr. Benson would like to see you in his office, Jack. Upstairs. Come on, I'll walk you up. Okay, hang on, but there was something else on, on the desk that I wanted to look at first. Okay, so this paper, what is this about? Oh, this is the, the letter she brought in. Okay. But then... What about this one? What a... 6005 West Sunset Boulevard. Tele Telephone number MI221. I'm sorry. That was that was my fault. I dropped it. Can I? Can anything else? Such dangerous music going on. All right, we'll we'll follow, I suppose. 1947, not 1927. Of course, a girl can ask a fella out. I'm I'm stuck. <laughs> but not your phone number. Ooh. <laughs> Someone ought to take him home. He's loaded. I didn't come to California to be a secretary. Clarence Fleming. Mr. Benson, you wanted to see me? Ah, oh, yes, Jack. I'm just trying out a new putter. I noticed Elsa Lickman in the lobby. It's the weirdest thing, Mr. Benson. Call me Curtis, Jack. This is California. <laughs> like I said, Curtis, this is a very strange case. How so, Jack? That lady, Elsa Lickman, is refusing a 20 grand payout. Elsa Lickman is hardly a lady, Jack. She's a jazz musician. Plays at the Blue Room in Hollywood. She has a fine pair of lungs, now that I think She's of it. She's the beneficiary of this guy, Lou Buckwalter. He was killed in an industrial accident working for Elysian Fields Developments. You know Elysian? I'm familiar with Leland Monroe. We move in similar circles. Well, Ms. Lichtman is making some pretty serious accusations. She says the case stinks and that She's a very happened. highly strung girl, Jack. Strung out might be a better way to put it. It's a pretty generous payment, Curtis. I think I should look into it. Is there anything wrong with the paperwork, Kelso? No, there isn't, Mr. Benson. I didn't think so. Pay the case out and get her off our backs. I can't make her take the money, Deal sir. Deal with it, Jack. Do your fucking job. Whoa. Do I have to do everything? No, sir, you don't. Fine, Jack. Fine. You know I have the greatest confidence in you. Thanks, Mr. Benson. No, you're not being worked at all. Conspiracy is afoot. Not in your life, Buster. Your car, Mr. Kelso. Thanks, uh, kid. Thanks. Hold E to skip to my destination. You mean I don't have someone to drive me anymore? <laughs> I, I don't actually know where we're gonna go. Chevrolet, Chevrolet, Fleet Master, two door. Oh, is a California life, fire and life notebook now. Oh, I like that. That's cool. Okay, so Elysian Field site, I suppose? Uh, 
no one to direct me how to get there. Oh. <laughs> like, problem. Problem. <laughs> okay. I... California Fire and Life. So it, I need to go the other way and then go left. Do you, I wonder, can I get like pulled over? Cause I'm such a bad driver when I'm driving around as Jack. Should totally test his theory. Bad driving. Yeah, Jack, you're such a bad driver. Can't you see what's happening? <laughs> Who's he talking to? <laughs> Nope, he doesn't talk to himself and give himself directions out loud. That would have been perfect. Okay, so... Can we go a little bit farther up, I think? Because I looked, but I couldn't tell you what road now. I do like his car. It handles a lot better than the last couple for Cole. All right, hang on. I think I passed it. Did I pass it? No, I didn't. Okay, Beverly, that's where I'm going. So I'm gonna cross over first. Okay. Excuse you. We've got a job to do. Yeah, Jack, we've got a job to do. <laughs> um, you guys are driving too slow. Oh, I have a horn now? No, I don't have a horn. Oh, I do have a horn! That's awesome! Must be his blind spot. Oh, I think this was Beverly. Maybe it was Beverly. I like how his boss so immediately was like, oh no, she's on something. And <laughs> she's not a lady, she's a jazz singer. <laughs> Those are mutually exclusive. <laughs> ah, here we are. So, am I going to turn in here? I can turn in here and then hang a right and then we'll be we'll nearly be there. Okay. Comes back again when you're and then we take a right. Where, where, wasn't there a video a million years ago where where I came through the subdivision and I was like, oh look, how cute. It's 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 prefab houses and, and it's a cute little suburban neighborhood and etc cetera, etc cetera. and that was i i liked that but apparently it's all awful now oh we've been here with um paul Cute pinups. Okay. All right. We nosy on the desk. Okay. That's not how my pop taught me to mix it. Someone is cutting corners. Okay, so it's cement delivery? Base building, sand, course. I, I don't know. I'll take your word for it, Jack. Okay, I guess that's all I get on that desk. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Bulldozing and starting again. Okay, City of Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety Order of Demolition. The City of Los Angeles, pursuant to Section 191, Part 1, Subsection A of the California Building Code, hereby orders that any building work at the Normandy Avenue subdivision associated with incident on 12847 be immediately demolished and all building material removed from the site. Notice date September 22nd, 1947. January 28th. Um, no, settlement letter, 
I think he died in February. I was trying to think of, I was trying to look and see if it was the same date. Leland Monroe, the man with the grin. Looks like he doesn't like to be disappointed. Of course not. He's a rich person. <laughs> not to classify all rich people like that, but you know what I mean. Elysium Fields Development Site Office, 4105 at Council Street to Frank Osterman. From Mr. Leland Monroe, regarding construct construction schedule, delays will not be tolerated. I feel like we saw some of these when I was with Cole. Oh, that's it, again. Okay. Is there anyone here to talk to? Oh. Hey! You just can't be walking around down here. I'm Jack Kelso from California Fire and Life. I don't care if you're from the Vatican. Buzz off! I'm investigating the accidental death of a Lou Buckwalter and- You deaf? Do I have to beat on you? Looks like you do. You're right. I came to see the house where Lou Buckwalter <laughs> died. You were just about to offer to show me the way. It's out the gate and three houses down on the left. Don't know what you're looking for, smart guy. There's nothing there. Then I'll poke around in the rubble. Fine. As long as you're out of my sight. Oh my, Jack. Three, is it on the map? Please be on the map. Three houses down. It's not on the map. No, wait. There it is. Demolish house. It is on the map. Oh, good. Um, let's escape. And then can I mark it with the flag? Nope. Not intuition locations. Demolish house. That destination. We can just walk there, right? We can have a little, a little looky-loo. Are people America gonna understand? It's not about already living it's in these houses? Anything. Oh my gosh! It's been a year. What are you waiting for? Um. The place falls down and then they bulldoze it. What gives here? Yeah. Not for construction use? Was this in the house? This guy must have escaped from the loony bin. Who are you talking to? I'm just investigating. How bad is it? Come on, you can tell me. Well, look at the house. How bad do you think it is? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, mm, is there... Buddy, you dropped something? Yeah. A house. Who are these guys? Although I feel like... Can I change Jack's outfit? Doesn't seem like I can. Oh, disappointing. Oh, here we go. Here's another flag. He wants a five star goddamn wedding. Not for construction use. Rehab is for quitters. There are three kinds of people those who can count. And those, those who can't. can't. Yeah, I've heard that joke. Uh, generally speaking, if you, you look at this clown. Let's try to piece this together. Okay. That's oh. not right. No. Season now. Um, this one here, maybe. Keystone Films. Who gets their lumber from a film studio? Criminals. I'm sorry, what's happening here? Son of a bitch. Well, 
I I need to apparently get much farther ahead before I can try try doing that. Okay, let's 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 escape a bulldozer again. That seems a little extreme. He got really mad that you punched him in the face. Son of a bitch. So where are we going now? Trace address of Keystone Films. Okay. Um, apparently there's a game well over here. How? Isn't that like a police officer thing? Can we get out of the car? Thank you. Hey, there's such a thing as soap, you know. You, you need to go take a bath. I survived the war for this. You're a real asshole. Jack Kelso, that? California Fire and Life Investigator. I need an address on the Keystone Film Company. The address is 658 North Wilton Place. Is there anything else? No, thank you, ma'am. Okay, I guess that's where we're going next. So bizarre. <laughs> I mean, Jack. All right, Keystone Films. Here we go. Um, I could actually just, well, you know what? It's fine. I can drive there. It's okay. It's very funny when Jack like yells at himself <laughs> about, about his bad driving. Okay, so we need to go all the way up to, let's go to Melrose and then Wilton. How's that? I feel like that's fair, right? We can honk the horn a lot. <laughs> Again, I, I wish there would be a police officer who pulls him over. They're like, sir, sir, you cannot keep driving like this, sir. <laughs> okay. Rose, and then I forget where I was supposed to turn, but uh, we'll just figure it out. I'm sure What's it'll be your fine. problem? Yeah, what is your problem, Jack? Why do you keep driving like this? Wilson, I think. We're gonna get such a bad accident. Excuse me. Hong Kong. Coming through. That is not Wilton. Neither is this that one. Oh, a public service announcement. Ooh, public service announcement. Oh, here we go. Is an ever growing the LAPD advises all parents to send their children to Sunday school and take them to church. <laughs> what? <laughs> to address delinquency, take your kids to Sundays to church, basically. I mean, it might work for some kids, maybe. Hi, Mac. I work for California Fire and Life. I'm looking into an industrial accident. Here? No, <laughs> not here. At a housing development over on Normandy Avenue. So? I found some lumber over there had the Keystone name printed on it. We've been closed since 41. Never quite made the transition to talkies. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund are pulling the place down. Know anything about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? Nix. 
Mind if I take a look around? I'm kind of hungry. If someone was to leave a couple of bucks here, I might wander down the street and get a cup of coffee. Is there a key to the gate? No. The only guys who go in or out are some delivery guys from Elysian Fields. They're working on a housing development over at Wilton and Santa Monica. You'll have to hop it. Well, I'm sure Jack can hop a fence. There we go. Perfect. Now this huge area to explore. Screening room. Oh, it's definitely going here. See what the rich and powerful have to say for themselves. Okay. I is that supposed to actually can we like put it in the thing over here? Businessmen join forces to launch the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund pledges to speed up housing development for returning GIs. Gentlemen, this is Dr. Harlan Fontaine. What? He's our latest investor in the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Doctor, this is Curtis Benson. He's vice president of the California Fire and Life. We're pleased to meet you, Doctor. Ray Gordon, editor of the Times. Doctor. District Attorney Don Sandler and Police Chief Warren. Gentlemen. I am delighted to be in such exalted company. You're making quite a name for yourself, Doctor, amongst the thespian fraternity. I find that those of artistic temperament are often of a fragile mental disposition. It's a short step from miscreant to recidivism, Doctor. Very true. But I think we could all agree that the City of Angels does rather well basking in the reflection of the motion picture industry. Here, here. And it's something that every sucker getting off a train at Union Station wants a part of. Gentlemen, we're here to sell the American dream, and Hollywood is our greatest advertiser. So, how is your new development selling, Leland? Cannot throw them up fast enough, Ray. And that's part of the problem, Leland. Washington is receiving steady complaints. There's a clamor for public housing. God damn it, Ray. Public housing is tantamount to communism. Now that's why we fought this goddamn war. I'm telling you, it's reds by the back door. You can't have it both ways, Leland. The new freeways are being built to service all your developments out in the boondocks. They're all being built with government money. The GI Bill is government money. There's a difference. What difference? The GI money ends up in my pocket. I hope you mean uh, our pockets, Leland. We're all investors. Of course, Curtis. So, when will the freeway bond be passed on? It still has to be ratified. It takes a long time to raise three billion dollars. I need to find a game well or a telephone. Yeah. This is... Movie Graham News? In a great day for the future of Los Angeles, civic leaders and businessmen join forces to launch the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund pledges to speed up housing development for returning GIs. Gentlemen, this is Dr. Harlan Fontaine. Okay. He's our latest investor in the suburban redevelopment fund. Doctor, this is Curtis Benson. He's vice president of the California Fire There's apparently a telephone over there. Doctor. 
I didn't finish investigating though. And I, I kind of wanted to. There's a pile of wood over here. No, nothing. How about over here? Nothing. Gosh, <laughs> the horn startled me. Keystone Films, yeah, look. But apparently it's not, oh, oh, oh. There we go. That's one way to keep your cost down. Too bad it won't support a roof. Mm-hmm. It's meant for film sets, it's for show. Okay, is there anything else over here? It's kind of hard to know if I'm actually done because, um, there's no music. Anything? At least they're not using a horse to build the, the you know, the houses. Okay, I guess that's it. Probably not, but you know what? It's fine. Okay, so we need to go back out to the desk area here. Was this a newspaper? No. Not Senate passes President's Emergency Labor Bill. Okay. Um, bone. Operator, think you could put me through to police dispatch? Thanks. This is Jack Kelso, investigator for California Fire and Life. Can you put me through to Curtis Benson, please? Just a moment, please, Mr. Kelso. Who's Curtis Benson? Jack, how can I help? Oh, his boss, that's right. Do you know anything about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund, Mr. Benson? I've heard of them, Jack. Building new homes for GIs. With green lumber that was used on movie sets. Jack, are you working the Buckwalter case? Mr. Benson? Are you part of the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? Jack, I want you to listen very clearly. Call Miss Lickman. Call her as soon as you hang up. Arrange to see her tonight and get her to agree to the settlement. Do it tonight. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. End of story, Jack. I don't want to hear another word about Elsa Lickman or Lou Buckwalter. Can you put me through to Michigan 221? Putting the call through. Hello? Ms. Lichtman, it's Jack Kelso. Yes, Mr. Kelso. I've been looking into your case. Yes, and what have you found? It doesn't look good. I need to see you. Meet me at the Blue Room. I work there tonight. I take a break around nine. I'll be waiting at the stage door. We can talk then. Auf Wiedersehen, Mr. Kelso. Thanks, ma'am. Oh my, where is this going to go? Cole and he are going to interact soon. It's going to happen, right? <laughs> it's going to be so awful and awkward. Oh, there's Cole. I don't suppose I'll make a plea Cause baby, you know I'm guilty Where's he going? Okay, he's going around back, looks like.
What were you doing with him? I was doing what you asked. I didn't ask you to meet him in an alleyway. Uh oh. Why do you snarl at me? Your friend came to ask me to accept the insurance. He's not my friend, Elsa. I think he's a brave man, and you have placed him in great danger. You've involved him in something, and he has no idea of the risks. Can you live with that, Cole? Elsa, I need his help, and he hates my guts. Forget the past, Cole. He deserves the chance to say no. If he helps you, let it be on his terms. I'll go see him in the morning. Okay. Investigate Elysian Field Site 2. I'm very confused, but um, I think my confusion is just going to have to wait until Tuesday because I am at time. So on Tuesday, maybe we'll unravel this mystery and and and, and go from there. That's all I got. <laughs> but anyways, as always, thank you so very much for watching. Please do keep yourselves safe, and I will see you again on Tuesday with another new L.A. Noir video.